AZ104, also known as Microsoft Azure Administrator Associate, is a role-based certification that validates your ability to implement, manage, and monitor the Azure cloud environment. So in case AZ104 is the exam you are preparing for and looking for the real exam questions to test your knowledge, then this is the video for you. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. And this is our latest AZ104 exam preparation series targeting the exams in 2024. Let's get started. So here comes the very first question for today. Question number six, part three. The question says that you have a Microsoft 365 tenant and an Azure Active Directory tenant named Contoso.com. Now you plan to grant three users named user one, user two and user three access to a temporary Microsoft SharePoint document library named library one. And besides this, you also need to create groups for the users. The solution must ensure that the groups are deleted automatically after 180 days. Which two groups should you create? Please note that each correct answer present a complete solution and each correct selection worth one point. And the given options are option A, Office 365 group that uses the assigned membership type. Option B, a security group that uses the assigned membership type. Option C, an Office 365 group that uses the dynamic user membership type. Option D, security group that uses dynamic user membership type. And lastly, option E, a security group that uses dynamic device membership type. So let's check out the correct options. The first correct option is option A and the second correct option is option C. Moving on with the question number seven, it says your company has several departments. Each department has a number of virtual machines. Now the company has an Azure subscription that contains a resource group named RG1. All the virtual machines are located in RG1. Now you want to associate each virtual machine with its respective department. What should you do? Your options are option A, create Azure management groups for each department. Option B is create a resource group for each department. Option C is assign tags to the virtual machines. And lastly, option D, modify the settings of virtual machines. And the correct answer is option C, assign tags to the virtual machine as this is the best approach to associate each virtual machine with its respective department. Now you may be wondering what is Azure Tax? Now Azure Tax, my friends, is a key value pair that helps you identify resources based on the settings that are relevant to your organization. And remember, Azure Tags are just the metadata that you can assign to any resource in your Azure solution. So friends, associating the tags with the different resources really help the organizations to identify the resource and also helps in the billing part. And the beauty of this approach is that without even reconstructing anything, you can assign Azure tags to all the resources. And just so you know, Azure tags are absolutely free. Let's check out some more documentation on Azure tags. So this is the documentation where you can learn how to use tags to organize your Azure resources and management hierarchy. Here you can read that tags are metadata elements that you can apply to your Azure resources. They're just the key value pairs that helps you identify resources based on the settings that are relevant to your organization. And if you want to track deployment environment of your resources, add a key named environment and further to identify the resources deployed in production, give them a value production. This is fully formed key value pair environment equals to production. So this is the key environment and this is the value for the key, which is production. Or in other case, my friends, if you want to identify the resources on other factors, let's say you have multiple departments in your company. For example, you have finance, you have IT, you have HR, and you want to identify what resources are being used by each of these departments. Then you can assign the tags to all the resources based on these departments. And this will really help you to identify the resource based on each department and control the cost. So that's how my friends, tags are super useful free resource. Use them to your full advantage. And yes, looking at the importance of Azure tags, I'm coming up with a detailed video on them. Please subscribe to the channel and press that bell icon so that you get the timely notification. Question number eight, it says you have an Azure subscription that contains several hundred virtual machines. Now you plan to create an Azure monitor action rule that triggers when a virtual machine uses more than 80% of the processor resources for five minutes. Now you need to specify the recipient of the action rule notifications. What should you create? Your options are action group, security group, distribution group, or lastly, Microsoft 365 group. 
the correct answer for this question is option a action group now friends let's understand what exactly is action group the documentation says when the azure monitor data indicates that there might be some problem with your infrastructure or the application an alert is triggered now friends it is these alerts that can contain action groups which are collection of notification preferences azure monitor azure service help and azure advisor use action groups to notify users about the alerts and the action taken so that was action group for you please remember all the documentation that i'm referring in this video all is shared in the description box let's move on question number nine says that you have an azure virtual machine that has a single data disk now you have been tasked with attaching this data disk to another virtual machine now you need to make sure that your strategy allows for the virtual machines to be offline for the least period of time which of the following is the action should you take first your options are stop the virtual machine that includes the data disk option b stop the virtual machine that the data disk must be attached to option c detach the data disk and lastly delete the virtual machine that includes the data disk now friends i am sure that you would have come across this question on many of the dumps available online and many of these online dumps are suggesting that you need to stop the virtual machine and then detach the data disk and then attach the data disk to another virtual machine but trust me actually this is not needed of course you can take this approach but this is a overkill the better approach would be you can simply detach a data disk from one virtual machine and attach to another virtual machine without stopping any virtual machine and i'm pretty sure you want to validate the answer so what are we waiting for let's move on to the microsoft documentation so this is the documentation that tells you how to detach a data disk from a windows virtual machine so let's start reading the documentation first of all it says when you no longer need a data disk that's attached to a virtual machine you can easily detach it and this action will remove the data disk from the virtual machine but please remember this does not remove the storage and now my friends on the same documentation this is one section which says detach a data disk using powershell and here you can clearly read it says you can hot remove the data disk using powershell but make sure nothing is actively using the data disk before detaching from the virtual machine so the only point that you need to make sure is that nothing is actively using the data disk and if so is the case you can easily remove the data disk without stopping any virtual machine moving on to the question number 10 question says that you have an azure subscription that contains a user named user1 now you need to ensure that this user1 can deploy and manage virtual machines but not access the virtual network connected to the virtual machine the solution must use the principle of least privilege which role based access control role should you assign to the user one your options are owner option b virtual machine contributor option c just the contributor and the last option d is virtual machine administrator login and the correct answer for this question is option b virtual machine contributor so let's validate our answer we have chosen virtual machine contributor here you can read that virtual machine contributor can create and manage virtual machines manage this and install and run software of the root user of the virtual machine using virtual machine extensions and manage local user accounts using virtual machine extensions and as the question demanded this role does not grant you management access to the virtual network or the storage account the virtual machine is connected to so friends this entire documentation really validates our answer so that's how we can say virtual machine contributor is just the right role for this business case and that's all for today my friends please please make sure to like the video it's actually your likes which are loved by youtube algorithm and reach to more and more wonderful azure learners just like you and i will see you in the next video till then stay fit keep learning and thanks for watching